Okay, so what I'm going to look at here is the elemental entrance animations. Um, one thing I've noticed with it is that uh, there's no option to reanimate uh, each time a widget or whatever the animation is applied to comes into the viewport. I'll show you an example here. I've got a page which is, I've got some Lorem Ipsum text here, just so I can scroll. Uh, once a heading which is below this comes into view, you see the animation effect apply. There we go. So we've got two elements here which animated by sliding from the right. Now, if I go take those headings off the viewport, so out of the view, and then I scroll back to them again, they don't reanimate. So they just stay as they were. They've animated once, and as far as Elementor is concerned, uh, that's all they need to do. Now, what would be really handy is on the um, motion effects, when you apply a entrance animation, it'd be really, really good if there was a switch there to say that whether you wanted to only play once or you wanted to reanimate each time it enters a viewport. Unfortunately, there isn't. What I've worked out is a way to make that happen. It does use a bit of JavaScript. So, so for some of the new users, this might be a little bit daunting, but um, it gives you an idea of what can be done. Uh, from the intermediate to advanced users, they'll understand. So if we look at this here, so I've basically got a section here with some Laura Mipson text, another section with some Laura Mipson. I've got a heading element at the bottom of each one of these. Okay. So both of these, if we have a look at the motion effects, we've got the same light speed in effect applied to them. Light speed in. What I want to do is make the one on the left here so that it reanimates every time it enters the viewport and leave the other one as default to show you the, uh, the difference between the two. So I need to look at the JavaScript first. So if I go to my JavaScript code here, very, very, I'm not going to do too in depth of this, just a very quick explanation of. So I've got a listener here, so it's waiting for all the DOM content to be loaded. Um, so we know everything's on the screen. Uh, it, it would have loaded uh, most of the JavaScript. Uh, and at this point, we can actually assign a, uh, a variable to jQuery, because uh, jQuery is now available. We try and do this before the DOM content loaded. Uh, jQuery is undefined because it hasn't loaded yet. So basically, DOM content loaded, sign a variable dollar to the jQuery, uh, and then we're going to run a function here, which is track elements for animation. So we've got two functions. This one here, the track elements for animation, uh, which we'll work through. Uh, and then we've got this one here for setting the toggle classes. So I'll show you what I mean by that, why I need. So if we look at the code, on the HTML here for this element. What we'll see if we go up the DOM here to the element. See, we've got some classes here which are elemental element, elemental element with a unique ID, uh, elemental widget, elemental widget heading, uh, and we've got some others here which has nothing to do with the uh, core elemental. We've got animated slow, uh, animated um, light speed in, etc. So the way CSS animations work is they apply when the classes are, are added to the DOM. So if I take these two out, for example, okay, I don't see any difference. And if I add those two classes back in, when I press the enter key, you'll see that it'll reanimate. Okay, so what we want to do with our JavaScript, we want to strip out, when this goes out of the viewport, we want to strip out any classes that don't begin with the word elemental. When it enters back into the viewport, the classes that we stripped out, we want to add back to the element, uh, and that'll tell it to reanimate. And the reason we don't want to take out the, strip out the one starting with element, uh, elemental, is because we might have some uh, padding and uh, you know, other bits and pieces applied to, to that. 
So if we take those those uh, classes out there, we might end up with some shift because uh, um, the size of the element is going to change when we run those classes. So for safety, so we don't end up with an issue, I'm going to tell it to ignore any of these classes that start with element. Anything that doesn't start with Elementor, when this goes out of the viewport, I'm going to tell it to remove those classes. Back into the viewport, I'm going to tell it to add them back. So let's see how that works. I'm going to use a, a built-in uh, API for your browser called the Intersection Observer. Now, this won't work with old browsers, so old um, IE, uh, 11, etc. cetera. Uh, it, well, this is a fairly new API, so if you're going to target uh, old browsers, this is not going to work, but anything new, uh, this will work. So what the Intersection Observer does is takes a array of options. So by saying the root is null, that means I want the entire viewport. Okay, I'm not going to go into this. You can look at that up yourself through the uh, API documentation. Uh, what sort of margin? So I can actually set a margin. This is the same sort of syntax you'd use for setting margins uh, in CSS. So it's the if you want to specify top left, um, so top right, bottom left, um, you can put those in there. So I go top, uh, you know, ten pixels for the right, you know, twenty pixels for the bottom, etc. Uh, so you can do the same sort of thing. I've just said there's a root margin of zero. So as soon as it enters the viewport at all, uh, I want it to. Uh, to detect that. Um, the threshold of one, which means that the element has to be in the viewport um, to actually apply this. Um, you can set like thresholds of say 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5, and what that means is even if half of that element is in the viewport, then it'll apply it. I don't think that's necessary. I think it's just going to confuse things. So we just set the threshold as one. Uh, now, what we then do is we um, set up our uh, observer to, um, to what we actually want to do when those uh, when those events take place, so when it's in and out of the elements. Now, before I talk about that, so after we set up the track elements, etc., uh, we then have to go through and find all of the elements that we want to apply this to. We're going to tell this observer to observe that element. So in this case, uh, if I get the class of repeat entrance animation over to here, and I add that class there. Now that element is now going to be tracked by, so I'm actually using a constant up here. Uh, so this is going to collect all of the elements that have that class, the repeat entrance of animation class, it's going to go through each of those and it's going to tell this observer to watch that or when it enters or leaves the viewport. So that's the step we need to make sure we do is every one of these that we want to have uh, reanimate, we've got to add that class to them. So what this then does is that it sets up a uh, observer and we can have multiples. So what happens is when we uh, when we when this triggers, uh, so when the when an element that's being observed either enters or leaves the viewport, it will send an array of those uh, entry elements. Uh, so we want to actually iterate through those arrays and find out whether it's intersecting. So intersecting means it's inside the viewport. Uh, if it is inside the viewport, we want to do something. If it's in, outside the viewport, we want to do something else. So uh, we then have a tricky little bit here, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain. So the because Elementor adds the classes to animate uh, when an element first comes into the viewport, we need to wait until that's happened before we can get a list of the classes that we want to remove when it leaves the view. Uh, what we're doing here is if we're saying that we haven't defined a set of classes that we're going to toggle, uh, then set a timeout, wait for 50 milliseconds, uh, allowing Elementor to add its classes for animation, and then it's going to set the toggle classes for that target. So for each of these 
um, elements that it's uh, that is being observed. What it's doing, we're creating a string here, global classes, and we're using this conditional here, uh, JavaScript conditional with a question mark. What that means is that if the element starts with uh, Elemental, so the class name starts with Elemental, just add an empty string uh, to the tall classes. But if it starts with it, doesn't start with Elemental, then add the actual class name to this uh, tall class string. And uh, then what we're going to set the data attribute um, on that element to the classes that we want to toggle. All right, so that's setting the classes. Then over here, what we're going to do is we're going to, if it's intersecting, so that's just the, the initial first, that's just the initial first uh, run. Uh, once we've got that toggle classes, um, all this will get ignored after that. Um, so from that point on, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the target and we're going to add the classes, the toggle classes that we created. Uh, and then if it's out of the viewport, we want to remove the classes with those toggle classes. So, so that's pretty much how that works. Now, I update this. And just do an F5. Okay. So in the viewport, the animated, out of the viewport. Didn't work. Why didn't it work? I'm looking at the wrong one. There we go. I'm looking at the wrong one in that editor, so I've got a few of these. So you saw when, if we press F5, so they both animate. If I go back here, press F5, once they come into the viewport, they animate. Go out of the viewport, and I come back into the viewport, this one animates over here. That's reanimating. Okay. There's a little bit of mucking around to do with CSS on this. But you can see it's reanimating. Uh, let's do the other one further up. If I go to this element here and add the class to that. F5. Both, had, both of them animated. Roll them out of the viewport, back into the viewport, and only that one had, uh, animated. There we go. There's a little bit more finessing to do with this. A little bit of flash because if I'm setting the threshold to the one, so it's got to be fully inside the viewport. So if I scroll, initially I'll see the uh, text and then it animates. So it's a little bit more finessing to do, but the idea is there. Uh, so it's something to start with. And um, if we look at the element, I'm going to look at the element here. You'll see it's got all these classes here. Watch, watch this line when I scroll it out of the viewport. Scroll out of the viewport. Now, all I've got is the classes that have Elementor at the beginning. Out of the viewport, scroll it back into the viewport, and it's added all these other classes back in, which we pulled out. So there we go. That's pretty much the method that I'm looking at using to do this. Um, Knowing about this uh, this uh, intersection observer also adds scope for a lot of things. Um, you can set up multiple uh, observers uh, and have them behave differently. Yeah, so it's a cool little uh, API, this uh, intersection observer, um, to allow you to do different things when things enter and leave the viewport. So have a bit of a Google search on that because some info on that. There's actually a cool little app I found online which you can play with that uh, and see what effect it has. Uh, but I can't recall it right now. So if, if I can find it, I'll chuck it in the uh, description. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, my method for doing this. And I hope that helps you.